Hi, Year 7. I hope you had a good half term. Uh, we're going to get straight into it and start to think about the lessons for this week. So if you click on History, Year 7, and go to Assignments, you're going to do the quiz after you've done the lesson. Remember, the quiz after the lesson. So we're going to go straight into Week 6, Lesson 9, Year 7, History. thinking about it. Okay. Now, um, as always, there's some instructions here that you need to follow very closely. First of all, complete the assignment by clicking on the word document. That's a typo there, apologies. Uh, there are two tasks in this lesson that you will have to do on paper at home. Now, you could print these out um, if you wanted to. You could do it on a pad of paper. There's a graph task. You can just could just write that graph out, for example, um, but you're going to have to do it at home. I will point those tasks out to you, but they are the ones that are both in landscape, that means on its side, orientation, okay? And as it says, once you've completed the lesson, you need to do the quiz. Don't do the quiz first. So click on the lesson. As always, if you wanted to do this on paper, you could click print and do that, but the easiest way is to go edit in document if you've got Word on your computer, you can click Edit in Desktop App. If you need help with uploading either printed work or work that you've edited on your desktop, then watch my video. It's in the description for this lesson. Uh, but the easiest way to do it is click Edit in Browser. And it's going to move things around. We know this. It doesn't matter. It will go back to how it was before. You can still edit the lesson absolutely fine, so don't worry about it. First thing to note, obviously, you need to go ahead and read the title of this lesson, Why Did Parliament Put the King on Trial? And the key terms, treason, assassinate, execute, and anoint it. And you need to read the definitions too. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and get started on the quiz it. There are four questions there. You need to answer the top two questions and then put these events in order along the timeline where it says type here underneath. Should take you about five minutes at least. Pause the video here, complete the quiz at tasks. Now. Okay, let's go through those together. And um, in what year did the Peasants' Revolt happen? It was in 1381. And a definition for the phrase divine right of kings, where you want to say something along the lines of it's when kings or king subjects or queens believed that they had been appointed by God. God had chose them to be king, therefore, or queen, therefore nobody could go against their views or against their laws, because that would be like going against God. Let's put those time periods in order. Well, the earliest on there is Anglo-Saxon England. That was from roughly 440 AD until 1066 AD, when the Battle of Hastings occurred. Then medieval, medieval England from 1066 until the Battle of Bosworth in 1485. Next, Tudor England, 1485 until 1603, when Elizabeth I died. And finally, you should have Stuart Britain from 1603 until 1714, because in 1714, the first of the Georgian kings from Hanover in Germany arrived. Surprise, surprise, he was called George. Okay, now we need to put these events in order along the timeline. And um, I'm actually gonna go and double check these because I can't remember exactly where they go. Okay, here it goes. So Charles raised his flag, his standard, and the Civil War started in Nottingham in 1642. Later that year, in October 1642, the Battle of Edge Hill took place. Thirdly, the Battle of Marston Moor was in 1644, and then the Battle of Naseby in 1645, which means that the last one is Charles surrendering to the Scottish, which happened in 1646. Now, as it says, in this lesson, you're kind of going back in time. Now, you're probably thinking, sir, we do that in every history lesson, but I want you to actually be some actors some people from the past in this lesson. And you're going to become later either Oliver Cromwell, you may have heard of before, and Thomas Fairfax. 
Now, if you've heard of Oliver Cromwell, it may be a surprise to hear that, at least during the Civil War itself, Thomas Fairfax really was the leader of Parliament, not Oliver Cromwell. Anyway, the year is 1647. Charles I has been in prison since he handed himself in to the Scottish army. Uh, and you need to type the missing name there. Oh, sorry, it should say date here. You need to type that in yourself. And was then sold by the Scots to Parliament. Some radical, remind yourself what that means, go back to the knowledge organiser if you need to, MPs in Parliament, led by Oliver Cromwell, want to put Charles on trial for treason. Not sure what treason means. Go back to the start. It's a crime doing something against the monarch or the country. See, that sounds weird. How can the monarch do a crime against himself? Oliver Cromwell says that Charles should be put on trial as a man of blood. What I need you to now think about is what might Oliver Cromwell mean by a man of blood? Pause the video here and type your answer underneath when you think you might know. Okay, now when he says a man of blood, what he means here is a normal man. Clearly Charles believes in the divine right of kings. Oliver Cromwell perhaps doesn't. We don't really know whether he did fully or not, but certainly he thinks that Charles should be put on trial, that means go to court, as a normal man, not as a king. Next, there are rumours that Oliver Cromwell and his supporters secretly want to assassinate or maybe even execute the king. Now, this really worries Sir Thomas Fairfax. He's an MP and the leader of the New Model Army. As I mentioned at the start, he really is the power in Parliament and in the army at this time. He's really worried about all of this stuff and he's reminded of a quote from the Bible that says, who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be innocent? Now we're gonna go back to the key words at the start and say anointed right, it means chosen by God. I guess that's similar to divine right of kings. I'm going to read that again. Who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be innocent? Who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be innocent? And the clue there was me hitting something. What might Thomas Fairfax be saying? Write your answer where it says type here. Pause the video and do that. Think about it for a minute at least. Okay, hopefully you've worked out that what Sir Thomas Fairfax is saying here is that if they physically hurt, attack, assassinate, execute, whatever the king, they won't be innocent in the eyes of God. God has anointed Charles. He has chosen Charles to be king. So if they go against that, if they hurt the king, they are going against God. And that's really scary for people at this time because religion is so important. Of course, it's really important to the parliament, parliamentarians who are Puritan Protestants. What happens next? Well, therefore, Thomas Fairfax and his supporters in Parliament favour making a deal with King Charles, where he becomes king again, but under new rules which take away most of Charles I's power and put Parliament in control. Of course, we all know that Oliver Cromwell wants to put him on trial, and there's a good reason he isn't sure about making a deal with Charles I. He says, Charles won't settle for less power. He'll start a new civil, civil war, and if we lose, he will still cut off our heads. What does Oliver Cromwell think might happen if they don't put the king on trial? Hopefully you've worked out that Oliver Cromwell thinks another civil war will happen. They could lose, they could end up dying. It could have really severe consequences for, for the parliamentarians because they could be 
executed. The stakes are high. We've got to work out this conundrum. Who is going to win in this context? Is Sir Thomas Fairfax and his followers going to win through? They'll negotiate with Charles. There won't be a trial. Well, what about Oliver Cromwell's faction, his group? Are they going to be able to force through a trial of Charles I? What happens? Well, in order to do that, I'm going to need you to pick an MP. Pick a side that you agree with most. Oliver Cromwell on the left, Sir Thomas Fairfax on the right. And um, you're going to become that character for most of the rest of this lesson. So pick wisely. Um, once you've done that, oops, didn't like me doing that. Uh, once you've done that, you are going to, so I'm just trying to, I'm just going to leave that actually. Um, once you've done that, you're going to type the number of the person whose side you are on underneath. One for Oliver Cromwell, two for Sir Thomas Fairfax. Ten seconds to do that. Now, as it says, uh, you're going to be given a series of decisions to make. These decisions are based on real things that did actually happen between 1647 and 49. In each context, you'll be given three choices. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, I've got very bad hay here at the moment. Um, in each of these events, you're going to be given three choices for how to react to each event, A, B or C. And you can pick only one. And you're going to record your choices for each event, events one, two, and th one, two, three, and four here, look, where it says your choice underneath. So if you picked, for example, for event one, choice A, you would just type A in that box. Simple, right? But you, you must remember you are acting as your character, not as yourself. So you're trying to predict what do you think Oliver Cromwell would have done or Sir Thomas Fairfax would have done knowing what outcome they wanted. So your four events are below here, one, two, three, four. And don't go on to the next page yet because that tells you what happens. You have got four minutes, that's one minute per choice, to make your choice and write the letters A, B or C in the your choice column. Pause the video here and do that task now. Okay, I suppose it's time we went and found out what actually happened. If you scroll down onto the next page, you'll see that I've given you each event, and then in bold, I've written down what actually happened at each time. What I now need you to do is to record the writing in bold, write it in your own words, don't just copy it, and write down in the final column what actually happened. For example, with event one, well, the, what actually happened is Thomas Fairfax and his supporters still control the New Model Army and Parliament. So Charles promised to try not to escape again, and they continued to negotiate. So what I might write in here is Thomas Fairfax was in charge. Charles promised not to try to escape. Negotiations to take some power off Charles and give it to Parliament continued. Okay. Should take you about five minutes. Pause the video here and complete the what actually happened column now. Okay, now the next two tasks really are the ones that you cannot do on uh, Microsoft Teams. You're gonna have to do this on a pad of paper, print this off, um, one of those options. Now, the first of all, we're thinking about uh, Charles's trial itself. As I, as we've read on the last page, Parliament, um, well, really the New Model Army, stormed into Parliament. Unbeknownst to Sir Thomas Fairfax, they chucked all of the parliamentarians who were against tri putting Charles on trial. Uh, they chucked them all out of Parliament. And uh, they passed a new law making it legal for them to put Charles on trial. And that trial began on the 20th of January, 1649. But we need to bring all of this together now and think about what it was that actually caused Parliament to put the King on trial. You have got six events. 
in chronological order in the blue boxes across the top. What I need you to do is add each of these events to the graph, but you're adding them not only in the correct chronological order. Look, I've got given you the, the years, the dates and the months in each year below. So you've got to get it in the right place there. You're thinking yourself about how close each event takes us to Charles I being on trial by using our Charles I trialometer. So for example, event A, November 1647, Charles I is warned he will be assassinated. He escapes prison, but is caught. Now, clearly that ticked Parliament off a little bit, but it doesn't necessarily bring him that close to trial. Hey, it contributes to it. It makes Oliver Cromwell even more determined to take Charles to trial. But because Sir Thomas Fairfax is still really in charge of everything at this point, and he doesn't want a trial, it doesn't bring us that close. So I would be putting it here above, uh, where are we, 1647. I'm going to go across to November, and I'd add it there. If you can see my cursor on the page. But I think I'd probably put it around kind of 20 to 30%, somewhere there. And all you're going to have to do is just type the letter A, or write, sorry, the letter A where you think it should be. All right, so you're sort of creating a line graph. Then you go to the next one. December 1647. I find December at the bottom. I'm going to draw it, go up from there. Charles I and his supporters in Scotland raise an army and make plans to invade England and return King Charles to the throne. I think that takes him quite close to a trial. Um, and it's, I'm not saying here that that trial is going to happen instantly. Clearly, there's a couple of years before it happens. But that's an important reason for Oliver Cromwell to want to put him on trial. One of Oliver Cromwell's key arguments is that Charles is just going to keep on starting a new civil war. And clearly, that's Ch Cromwell's evidence. So when we're talking about causes, it's important to note here that those causes don't always have to be right next to the event they caused. So I would put that above December. And I think I might put that somewhere up at like sort of 80, 90 percent, somewhere quite high. Now, once you've plotted each of your events on this graph, you're going to have lots of space. So next to that, as it says in number two here, you're going to explain why you wrote that letter in that position. Why did that event bring the trial of Charles I closer or push the trial of Charles I further away? I think you should get the idea. This task should take you about five to ten minutes. So pause the video here, write it out on paper or print it, and complete the graph task now. Sorry, should have said, there's also a challenge on the next page that you can do if you finish. Pause the video, complete the task. Okay, once you've finished that, the last main task for today is some reading. Now, really excitingly, I'm giving you an extract to read from a real historian. His name is Charles Spencer, and it's from a book that I read recently, actually, called The Killers of the King, that's all about why Oliver Cromwell and his supporters made the decision to uh, put the king on trial and execute him in January, January 1649. What I need you to do again is either print this out, um, if you can, or if not, write the answers to all the questions in A, B and C boxes in on a piece of paper, okay? But you, you simply just read the extract in the yellow box, and answer the questions in the A, B, and C boxes, and the reading challenge if you want to. You'll also notice that there are some keywords around the outside to help you with your reading. And you may want to read with the knowledge organizer for this cycle open in front of you so that you can use that to help you as well. If you finish the reading, there's also a challenge task for you to do to write a paragraph to answer this question on the next page. But that's the end of this lesson. This task should take you about 15, 10 to 15 minutes, and then you are done. So I'll, I'll leave you with this task and uh, I'll talk to you again next week.